So normally when you set up a document, whether it be Illustrator, Photoshop, um, InDesign, whatever program you're using, normally you set up your actual document to be the actual size that you're working on. So for example, in this case, it appears that this is a, um, a door hanger, right? That is on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. You would never set something up. Like if you knew that what you were doing is smaller than an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, you wouldn't open a new document, make it eight and a half by 11, and then draw your box and everything because it's gonna mess up your rulers, it's gonna mess up your export and all that stuff. So for example, here I'm gonna do a file new. So I'm gonna make a new document and this screen is gonna pop up. And the dimensions that I'm gonna give you for this are in inches. So I'm gonna set up a new document and I'm gonna tell you, and this will all be in the assignment, that it is 4.25 inches by uh, 10.5 inches. And it's obviously vertical. Um, if we're gonna do a bleed, um, I believe is, is when uh, colors like this, this person has the color going right to the edge of the paper. Well, when you're actually producing this file, you have to um, allow for bleed over the side. That means if your color is going to go all the way to the line, to the edge of the paper, you actually need to push your color a little past it. And the reason why that is, is because um, the uh, when the printer is printing it, there's the uh, the plates, the physical plates could move, the printing plates, it could shift. And if your color goes right up to the edge, if it moves even just a little bit over, you could have like a white line on the side. So um, normally for our bleeds, we make them 0.125, all right? And our color mode is gonna be CMYK because it's for print, this is not electronic. This is gonna be printed and hung on a door. So we're gonna make it CMYK color and um, our resolution is gonna be high. So I'm going to um, uh, grab a picture of this and I'll be able to put that in there. So this is exactly how you're going to set it up. And we only need uh, one artboard because we're just doing the front side. So having said that, if we go to here and create, it gives us our document. So this is the door hanger. This is the size of the door hanger that we're working with. Now, um, I'm actually going to give you the dimensions of, um, of the door hanger. So, but I'm gonna use, I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this one and bring it in there just so I can figure out where the circle is gonna be. Cause I don't have that written down in front of me. So if my door hanger is here, I'm gonna turn on my rulers. I'm gonna go view um, rulers, show rulers. And I'm going to draw a guideline here and a guideline here. I'm just trying to figure out like where that circle is going to be. And one more guideline right here. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. So now I know that I just need to make a circle right here. So I'm going to hold down my shift key and draw a circle until it meets, reaches those guidelines. Okay, and then that's there. Now, while I'm doing this, I'm gonna go ahead and give it a stroke. So I'm gonna go to window, uh, stroke, which is over here on my secondary window. Move all this stuff over here. Okay, so I can give it a stroke, say like, you know, half a point should be plenty. Also, one thing to notice is just to make sure that, I mean, I copied it from that other format, but just to make sure that this is in the right place, I can use my properties palette, which remember we were using this yesterday for getting the, uh, the tints of our color. Well, the properties palette also tells me the location of whatever I have selected is. So you'll see that it's dynamic. It's going to change when I select this circle. So now it's telling me that um, the midpoint of this is at 
and uh, or I'm sorry, the midpoint is at uh, 1.5191. So if this is 4.25, all right, 4.25. So the midpoint should actually be, just double check. No, I'm sorry, that's the width and the height, X and Y. So 4. Point, it should the midpoint should be here, the X going this way. If I know that my document is 4.25 inches, half of 4.25, um, two five inches is four point is two point one two five. So that's now that's not right. Hold on, I'm sorry guys. Let me just double check this. I don't have I my screen is kind of messed up. Four point two five, two point one two five. Yeah, it should be two point one two five. So that should be the actual center of the page, and I can check that even though it looks visually off because of my guidelines, if I were to draw a rectangle that was 4.25 inches wide and then align that rectangle up here to the top corner at zero and zero, I can see that that circle is now in the center. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear those guides because they're just gonna be in the way. I'm gonna hide the guides. I'm going to, well, you know what? I'm going to keep this box. Let's keep it. I'm going to make it 4.25 and then, uh, what is it, 10.5 high. And you'll see that I can change the size just by using my properties palette. So now I can grab both of these, make sure both of them have a stroke of half a point, and then I can actually rename this layer, and we'll call it our template layer. So that's there. And I can also draw guidelines onto this layer so that I have a margin. So if I'm looking at my ruler, so I should have a margin of about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch all the way around. So I'm going to find there, view. Guides, show guides. So I'm going to get rid of this one, click and drag it off. I'm going to move this one to a quarter of an inch. I'm going to move this one down to a quarter of an inch from the bottom. And I'm going to click and drag and draw a guideline here to the four because I know that it's a quarter of an inch. By the way, this line right here, this is your paper. These are my margins. This line represents the bleed. So for example, if I was going to have um, a color, like if I wanted a, a color in the, in the background of this whole thing. So if I made it, um, let's see, this. I would have to extend that color all the way out past the page because if it wasn't all the way out past the page, if I made it exactly the size of the page, and this will kind of show you what I mean. So if I went right here and then they go to print this and then the printing plates shift over a little bit, it could wind up printing like that. And we don't want that. Okay. So now that I've got my guides and everything is ready, I can go ahead and lock this layer, my template layer. And then when I go to create my Zoomshi stuff, I can place it on a new layer and then I start working. So I'm gonna save this as my Zoomshi door hanger template. And it's asking me to do this.